Can you do waypoint missions with your DJI Mini 3 Pro and other older drones, just like you can with the current generation of DJI drones? Yep, you absolutely can. Let's take a look at how to do this. Hi, Todd with Blue Marble Videos here. Waypoint missions are one of the great features of the latest DJI drones. I use them extensively on my Mini 4 Pro. In fact, I used them and alluded to doing so in a couple of my recent videos. This led to a few folks asking me if they could do waypoints in their Mini 3 Pro and other previous generation DJI drones. Well, I've got good news for you. For most of you, the answer is yes, you can do this. For those of you that don't know, a waypoint mission is where you set up a series of different shooting locations in advance, consisting of position, altitude, drone orientation, and gimbal orientation, and then the drone moves smoothly and automatically from one to the next at a chosen speed, in order, while recording. There's all kinds of advantages to filming this way. You'll get repeatability, so you can repeat the exact same flight again and again, which you can use if you want to record changing environment, like weather, something being constructed or removed over time, or other conditions changing. If you want to do the same video several times, but with different camera settings and filters, so you can pick your favorite in post, and any number of other possibilities. I'll link a video and a card up there where I use this feature extensively. I'll put it down in the comments below as well. The problem is this feature is not officially supported for older generation drones, such as the Mini 3 Pro, the Mini 2, etc. So then, how do you do this? You don't use DJI Fly. Instead, you use a third party app. Now, DJI supports this by publishing an SDK for most of their drones. This allows people to write their own front-end software for controlling your drone. And there are a few of them out there. Just be aware, if you have DJI Care or your drone is still under warranty and you manage to break or lose your drone while using one of these third-party apps, you're out of luck for getting DJI to help you out. But if your warranty and DJI Care is expired, or if you're willing to take the risk, you can definitely try one of these out and get a few more features in your Mini 3 Pro or other older drones that just aren't available in the stock software and firmware. This is a great alternative to needing to upgrade to a new drone if you're still quite happy with the one you already own. Here we're going to focus on one particular app with a mention of another that's currently in beta a bit later. And this app is called DroneLink. Now, just to be clear, this video is not being sponsored or supported by DroneLink or anybody else in any way. These are my thoughts, my opinions, and my experiences. DroneLink is available for a number of DJI's older drones. Here's their webpage showing which drones are and are not supported. You'll notice the latest drones, such as the Mini 4 Pro, Air 3, and Mavic 3 Classic and Pro, are not yet supported. But many of the older drones are. Now, just to be clear, this is a paid app. Well, the app itself is free, but many of the features, such as waypoints, require you to pay for one of their plans. There's two main tiers, with each of these having several sub-tiers. For my needs, I selected the hobbyist plan and purchased the cheapest basic plan in this tier, which cost me $40.99 Canadian. The premium plan is about twice that, but I'm seriously considering upgrading to this already, as so far I really do like the software and can see several useful features I may want access to in the premium plan. So yes, it's not free. It'll cost you a little bit of money, but if you're needing waypoints for something, but are otherwise still quite happy with your current drone and are weighing spending 40 bucks for software or a thousand bucks for a new drone, well, the math on that is pretty simple. Okay, let's get into how this works. So here I'm using my Mini 3 Pro and my RCN1 controller. Unfortunately, this does not work if you're using the RC controller with the one with the screen. Those are locked down tight by DJI and it just won't work as DJI doesn't allow it. You can, however, use the RC Pro controller. I don't have one of those here to show you. Or you can use the RCN1 controller and your phone. 
Well, as Meatloaf said, two out of three ain't bad. Another limitation for some drones, including the Mini 3 Pro, is that you need to be using an Android device with your RCN1 controller, as iOS is not supported. Don't blame DroneLink. This is true for other third-party apps too, and is a result of DJI themselves. They've discontinued SDK support for iOS on these devices. This in my opinion, is really unfortunate. However, if you're an iPhone user, older, cheap, used Android phones are easily available, and you can pick one up just to use with your controller in this app. And you don't even need a cell phone plan or a SIM, as you can simply use your actual phone as a hotspot and tether the controller phone to it for data connectivity. So it may be worthwhile to get your kid's old Android phone out of that junk drawer, charge it up, and use it. As long as it's a lollipop or newer version of Android, that is. From the phone you're using with the controller, you'll need to install the DroneLink app. Don't go to the Play Store for this. Instead, using the phone's browser, go to DroneLink.com, then download. Pick your drone model, then your controller. Here I used the RCN1, and this will download the app. You'll need to ensure your phone's settings allow third-party apps to be installed, but if you have previously installed DJI Fly, this should already be the case, depending on where you live in the world. I won't go into how to ensure this is allowed with your particular model of phone here in this video, as it varies and is usually fairly easily Googled. Tap on your downloaded file to install DroneLink, then open the app, making sure to allow any permissions it asks for, or it won't work right. Obviously, you'll need to create a DroneLink account and purchase the relevant plan and log into the app. Okay, this next bit is important. Now what happens is that when you plug in your turned on controller into your phone, instead of DJI Fly opening as usual, you will get a couple of dialogues asking you what app you want to use with the just plugged in remote. Obviously, that's because you have more than one app. You'll pick DroneLink. If you didn't get this dialog and DJI Fly opened, then you'll need to stop it. And I don't mean just tap out of it to your home screen. You need to go into your phone settings, then apps, then DJI Fly, then tap force stop. Again, I'll let you Google how to do that on your particular model of phone. Drone Link won't work if another app is vying for control of the controller. Same thing if DJI Fly was being used previously on that phone, even if you did get the dialog. You need to make sure DJI Fly is force stopped before you can use Drone Link. Once you are successfully connected, you should see your drone's model in green in the upper right hand corner of the screen with the app running. Might take a few seconds to turn green. Take some time to adjust the settings to your liking and familiarize yourself with the basics. Though actually controlling the drone itself is virtually identical as with DJI Fly, so the learning curve is very short. Now to set up a new waypoint mission using your drone's current position, orientation and gimbal settings for each waypoint, tap on the lightning bolt icon, then scroll down to waypoints. Fly your drone to the position for your first waypoint, including pointing your camera where you'd like it. Tap Get Started in the lower right. Follow the on-screen instructions. Fly to each waypoint, rotate the drone and gimbal to where you want them, and tap the Mark button to add each additional waypoint. You'll see the waypoints being added to the list on the right. Obviously, if you click the trash can icon on a given waypoint, you can delete it and try again. Once you have all your waypoints, tap Next. Then choose Photos or Video, set up your path type, speed, and framing as prompted, as well as a few other options. Name the waypoint mission and then tap Continue and the mission will be generated. Now all that's left is to tap the Play button near the upper left of the screen. 3, 2, 1, Starting Mission. Your drone will do a three second countdown, then begin the mission. You can, of course, cancel it by tapping the pause button or return to home or whatnot. And this is what it looks like, alternating between the footage the drone captured and my phone's screen during the mission.
And there you go. Waypoint missions on your DJI Mini 3 Pro as well as some other older drones you may own. Another honorable mention here of another app that allows you to do waypoint missions on your Mini 3 Pro and a few other older drones is Lychee, L-I-T-C-H-I. However, there is potential for some confusion here as there's different Lychee apps for different drones. For the Mini 3 Pro, you'll need Lychee Pilot, not Lychee, and it's still in beta, though it's public beta, so anybody can try it out, but it's very limited. You can create waypoint missions using the map screen, but not using the drone's current position while it's in the air flying. And that is actually my preferred way to create waypoint missions. And also it doesn't have any other types of features or missions at this point. Once it's complete and out of beta, I'll likely do a review on this app as well. Take a look at some of the other features offered by DroneLink while you're playing around with it. It's a pretty powerful app. I hope this helped you be able to get a bit more use of you out of your Mini 3 Pro or other older drones. If so, help me out by tapping those buttons down there. As always, thanks very much for watching, happy flying, and we'll see you next time.